के श्री राधे सब वैष्णव को जय श्री कृष्ण श्री गोसाई जी की जय कंटिन्यूइंग विद द बायोग्राफीज ऑफ द 252 वैष्णव डिसाइपल्स ऑफ श्री गोसाई जी टुडे इज डे 87 वार्ता 66 द स्टोरी ऑफ किंग जोत सिंह हु लिव्ड अबाउट 40 माइल्स फ्रॉम पंडरपुर इन द साउथ Bhav Prakash. He is a devotee of Rajasi disposition. In the eternal Leela, his name is Kalindi, who manifests from Madhavi and is thus a form of her divine sen- loving sentiment. Part 1. The king used to be a devotee of one Rasai Devi. He worshipped her with great wealth and aplomb for many years. The king had a family priest who lived about 50 miles away in one village. The priest had a son who was a disciple of Sri Gosai Ji and he was an accomplished Vaishnava, a recipient of great grace. According to the Lord's plan, that priest died and some days later the son came to the king on the instructions of his mother. He arrived at the king's door. The king was in that goddess's temple. The boy asked, what is the king doing? The doorkeeper answered, he is in that goddess's temple but it, and it will be some time before he returns here. But you are a Brahmin priest, so if it is urgent, you can go to the temple. The boy thought, a good idea. Let me see what kind of goddess this is and what kind of wealth is being used. Thinking thus, the family priest's son went to the temple. At that time, the king was performing the arti ceremony to the goddess with camphor lamps placed on a tray made of gold. Many instruments were being played. Gandharvas were singing and the congregation was also singing the arti. The goddess was wearing very fine and expensive clothes and jewelry. Her throne was covered in gems and the whole temple was studded with gold, diamonds and pearls. Her wealth was uncountable. Knowing him to be the son of the family priest the people led him to the front the king was in in a sanctum and was performing a very long arti ceremony the priest's son caught sight of the goddess at that time the king had let some other individuals also participate in the arti ceremony and he was making endless prayers and praises he said Oh my goddess there is no god or goddess in the three worlds can even compare to you when the priest's son heard these words he shook his head the king saw this when the king had finished all the ceremonies he locked the door of the temple and set off home he sat on his throne the priest's son arrived there knowing him to be the son of fam- of this family priest the king stood as he entered he seated him comfortably and welcomed him respectfully the king then addressed him when you heard my prayers to the goddess why did you shake your head the priest's son from here on referred to as the priest replied that i will not tell you if you do i will feel offended if i do you will feel offended the king insisted that he tell him i will not be offended but pleased i promise he insisted over and over again the priest then made everyone else leave that place and said you addressed your goddess saying that there is no other goddess like her in the three worlds that is why i shook my head why because there is one god shri vitalnaji in whose service endless goddesses like your sai devi are engaged the king said he did not know if he could believe this the priest said just go to pandarpur and i will show you the king immediately mounted his horse and got all his entourage ready and set off for pandarpur together with that priest they reached pandarpur and had the holy site of shri vitalnaji the king then shook his head saying why did you praise him so much Here there is no wealth like my Rasai Devi's, no fine clothes. The priest kept quiet. The king left the temple. The priest stayed behind and stood in front of Sri Vitalnaji with folded hands. O oh, great lord, please give the king the holy sight of all your opulence. Please allay all his doubts and accept him as your own. The priest went to the king's camp. The king had a huge entourage and so there were also many tents put up outside that camp. At that moment Sri Vitalnaji created a town in a wood not far from the tents. It was totally amazing. Then Sri Vitalnaji donned the disguise of a household businessman and came to see the king. meet the king being carried in a luxurious palanquin the king stood king stood up when he saw he was being approached by this impressive effulgent man with transcendental beauty full of divine character and qualities who was wearing the most beautiful and priceless clothes and jewelry the light of whose face was equal to the light of the sun he welcomed him and stood and seated him on a raised throne the king stood before him with folded hands and the priest who recognized him bowed down at his feet the king inquired where have you come from please tell me who you are The businessman replied 
Please all come to my home. This is my wish to welcome you there. Having said this, he then invited everyone to come. The priest advised him to make sure that he went. When you are there, I will show you something extraordinary. The king then accompanied him with all his entourage. They all entered his town. They were most pleased to see the beauty of that town. The businessman offered a seat to the king in a large and beautiful temple next to his abode. The king was very astonished to see the place, the wealth and the seat he had been given. He had never seen or heard of anything so extraordinary. Everything and everyone there was special and unusual. The king and the priest went to sit in one high window. They saw countless ladies dressed in most beautiful and fine clothes, jewellery and gold bangles, and they were all carrying gold water pots and filling them with water. Amongst them was Rasai Devi, also fetching a pot of water. Seeing her there, the king was astonished. The priest said, Did you recognise that lady with the green tie-dye sari? The king said, No, I did not recognise her. The priest said, Let's go down to the street and stand there. When she comes past with her water pot, I shall point her out to you. The king and the priest came down and stood in the street. The ladies were all passing by after filling their water pots. Rasai Devi came there. The priest grabbed hold of the end of her sari and thus stopped her path and said to her, Who are you? He showed her face to the king and told him to recognise who she was. When the king s- s- saw the when she saw the king, she felt shy. The king addressed her, "You are Rasai. Where have you just come from? Whose water are you fetching?" Rasai Devi replied. I will tell you the truth, but you must believe me. This priest knows everything. There is no room here for deception. This is this Sri Takaji is my husband. We Davies are the servants of his servants. Today is a day in his honour, and so we are fetching water, but we are always engaged in serving him and his servants. After she had said this, the priest let her go, and she went off carrying the water. An invitation then arrived for the king. The king, the priest, and all the king's entourage were then served prashad in gold plates. It consisted of many types of beautifully cooked and vegetable dishes. This same prashad was then served to the king's servants, horses, elephants and other animals that were ridden. They were not fed with grass and grain. In the place of grass and grain, they were served sweets and fried preparations exactly according to their personal requirements. Then everyone was presented with sweet and fragrant pan leaves. The king took his leave and returned to his tent. When the king had slept that night and awoken in the morning, he saw that the town was no longer there. In fact, nothing was there. The king asked the priest what was going on. The priest said, I had told you about your Rasai Devi and the glories of Sri Vitalnachi. Now you have seen this for yourself. I had requested Sri Vitalnachi to let you see all of this. And he did. We pause this Vartaji here and we'll continue tomorrow. So, Aj Kyananda Kije, Sub Vaishnavan Ko Sadar, Osa Prem Jeshi Krishna, Jeje Shri Radhi.